In 2000, the Clay Maths Institute in the United States was preparing for the 21st century. Seven important unsolvable problems were chosen for the 21st century. They were called the seven great challenges of the world or the millennium challenges. And there was a prize, $1 million, seven problems, $7 million in total. It's a prize similar to the Nobel Prize. The problems have since resonated, not only with mathematicians, but also with the general public. One of these problems is the Poincaré conjecture. It was unanimously chosen as one of the top seven problems by the Problem Selection Committee. First, let's talk about the Poincaré conjecture. This problem is about the mathematical method of defining the shape of a three-dimensional space. Poincaré, a mathematician and physicist, was one of the greatest minds of his time, nominated 48 times for the Nobel Prize in Physics. In physics, a field that attracts only the best brains, 48 nominations for the Nobel Prize is a lot, isn't it? It's hard enough to win a poetry contest 48 times in middle school, but to be nominated for the Nobel Prize 48 times, I think it's one of the challenges that he was nominated so many times and didn't win the Nobel Prize in the end. Come to think of it, Einstein didn't win the Nobel Prize for his theory of relativity either. Even if he wanted to give it, he couldn't give it because it was just an unproven hypothesis, and he ended up winning the Nobel Prize for the photon effect. Anyway, the Nobel Prize is a great thing. Why is this conjecture important? Because it relates to the mysteries of the universe. The universe can be shaped into one specific shape. Even if its size seems infinite, it can be described by the same shape as long as its spatial properties are the same. This means that closed curves in three-dimensional space are mathematically the same shape if they converge to the same point, and the only closed curve that converges to a point continuously is a sphere. Difficult. It's hard to explain, so let's take a very common example. Here's a ball. It doesn't matter if it's a football, basketball, or rugby ball. The conclusion is the same. Let's make a curve with a thread on the ball. This is a closed curve. What happens if we shorten it successively? That's right, it connects to a dot. But what about the donut? It doesn't converge to a point even if you shorten the closed curve. In this case, an arbitrary closed curve creates a two-dimensional shape. It seems easy to show that if you surround a sphere with a line and then pull it, it becomes a point. The problem is that this is not what Poincaré's conjecture says. It says that the only shape that converges to a point when you pull a line through space is the shape of a sphere. Unsurprisingly, the latter is much harder to prove. In layman's terms, it's like saying all humans are creatures is true, but all creatures are humans is false. Proving the converse mathematically is something else entirely. Which seems harder to prove, the proposition that the closed curve surrounding a sphere is a point, or the proposition that the shape in which the closed curve is a point is necessarily spherical. The latter, of course. This is Poincaré's conjecture. And in 2002, a paper is published on the proof of this problem. It wasn't an international conference, it wasn't an international journal, it was an internet community. The proof is posted on the ArcSieve, an internet journal. It's no different than someone uploading a proof to Wikipedia, a blog, or YouTube, claiming to have solved a global problem. Imagine a YouTube video that says, I solved the millennium conundrum, Poincaré conjecture, roughly this is how it's solved. You'd get a lot of bad press. Do you know maths? You don't even understand that, do you? Would be on the very weak end of the spectrum. You'll get all sorts of comments, starting with keyboard warriors. Words that start with F will just be used as adjectives or adverbs. But as time went on, and the more we looked at his proof, the more internet users couldn't find fault. So what? Today's conclusion is, don't underestimate the power of the internet community. This story will continue in the next part.